Many people seem to think that history is about a bunch of people who died a long time ago doing things that aren't very interesting. And while that is kind of true, history is also filled to the brim with little facts and stories so insane that many people think they're made up. From wrestling presidents to wars against cats. Keep on watching as we discuss some historical facts you never knew. First we have worshiping turkeys. While the turkey is the best part of Thanksgiving feasts for the people in America, way back in 300 BC, these big birds were actually considered to be vessels of the gods by the Mayan people and were highly revered because of it. They were even domesticated so they could have a part in their religious rites. They can be found pretty much everywhere in Mayan iconography and archaeology as symbols of prestige and power. Next, Olympic medals for art. The Olympics are known for their international multi-sport competitions that only take place every four years, but did you know that they used to hold competitions for the fine arts? From 1912 to 1948, medals were awarded for everything from literature and architecture to painting, sculpture, and music. The art was created was, of course, required to be Olympic-themed. Pierre de Freddy, the founder of the modern Olympics, believed that including the arts in the Olympics was necessary because the ancient Greeks had the tradition of holding art festivals along with games. 151 medals were awarded before the events were eventually removed. Up next, Marie Antoinette's 100 Dead Imposter Sons. After the French Revolution, Louis XVII, who was only eight years old at the time, was jailed and never seen in public again. After his parents had been executed in 1793, he was put through horrifying abuse, neglect, and then isolated in a prison cell in the Paris Temple. He ended up dying from tuberculosis in 1795 at the young age of 10. He was then secretly buried in a mass grave. Many years later, dozens of men began to claim that they found Louis XVII because of the possibility of a bourbon restoration. If a claimant was successful, it would have led to them potentially sitting on the throne of France. Next, Napoleon and the attack of the bunnies. Napoleon Bonaparte, a legendary French military and political leader who gained prominence during the French Revolution, was once attacked by a horde of bunnies. A rabbit hunt had been requested by the emperor for him and his men, so naturally his chief of staff set it up and reportedly had his people round up around 3,000 rabbits for the occasion. It was when the rabbits were released from the hunt that things went wrong. Instead of running down the path they were supposed to, the rabbits charged straight towards Bonaparte and his men in a vicious and persistent rush. So it seems the Battle of Waterloo wasn't really this conqueror's greatest defeat. Now we have women's smoking ban. New Yorker Katie Mulcahy was arrested in 1908 for lighting a cigarette with a match she struck against a wall. But why? Well, because what she did was a direct violation of the Sullivan Ordinance, a city law that bans smoking in public for women and women only. Mulcahy argued about her right to be able to do something as simple as smoking in public during her district court hearing, but ended up getting fined $5 anyway. Only two weeks later, New York City's mayor vetoed the Sullivan Ordinance. Up next, poisoned alcohol during Prohibition. During the nationwide Prohibition in the United States from 1920 to 1933, the U.S. government decided to literally poison the alcohol. When people continued to consume it despite the official ban, law officials ended up getting frustrated and went for a more permanent deterrent, death. They ordered that the industrial alcohol that was manufactured in the United States be poisoned, being the products that were often stolen by bootleggers. Around the time the prohibition ended in 1933, it is estimated that the federal poisoning program ended up killing over 10,000 people. Next, the war on cats. Way back in the 13th century, Pope Gregory IV decided to declare war on cats. Yes, the little fur balls we keep as pets. He believed that black cats were instruments of Satan, and because of this, he ordered the extermination of these feline creatures throughout Europe. However, this extreme plan ended up backfiring as it led to a significant increase in the number of plague-carrying rats. Now we have Mary and her little lamb. We all know the nursery rhyme called Mary Had a Little Lamb, but you probably didn't know that it's actually based on a real story. The little girl's full name was Mary Sawyer, who was 11 years old and lived in Boston. One day, she was followed to school by her pet lamb, and in the late 1860s, she helped with raising money for an old church by selling the wool from said lamb. Next, ketchup as medicine. Forget about ibuprofen. When it came to popular medicine in the 1830s, ketchup was the way to go. In 1834, an Ohio physician named John Cook sold ketchup 
ketchup as a cure for indigestion. It actually didn't hit it as big as a condiment till the late 19th century. Who'd have thought? Now we have sacrilegious forks. Believe it or not, forks, the completely ordinary kitchen utensil we use every single day, were actually once seen as blasphemous. They were first introduced in the 11th century in Italy, and the spiked utensils were seen as an offense to God. You might be wondering why. Well, it was because they were basically artificial hands, likely thought to be mirroring the creation of God, hence being sacrilegious. Next, Lincoln, the wrestling champion. One little known fact about the 16th president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, is that he has a spot in the wrestling hall of fame. Before he took office, Lincoln was declared a wrestling champion. The president, who stood tall at six foot four, competed in around 300 contests and only lost one of them. Because of this, he earned a reputation as an elite fighter in New Salem, Illinois, and also eventually earned the country's wrestling championship. Also a bartender. The surprises don't end though. Besides being a wrestling champion, President Lincoln was also a licensed bartender. In 1833, the president actually opened up a bar by the name Barry and Lincoln, with his dear friend William F. Barry in New Salem, Illinois. The bar eventually had to be closed though due to Barry, who was an alcoholic, consuming most of their supply. Next up, the $1 bill and George Washington. Contrary to what most people think, the first face on the $1 bill was not that of the first president of the United States, George Washington. The initial face on the bill was Salmon P. Chase, as the first dollar bill was issued in 1862 during the Civil War. At that time, Chase was a Secretary of Treasury, as well as the designer of the country's initial banknotes. Now the real inventor of the light bulb. A pretty common misconception in the world of history is that Thomas Edison was the one who invented the first light bulb. While he did have a startling number of patents, around 1,093 of them, most of them were stolen. Though he did end up landing the patent for the light bulb in 1880. The actual inventor was Warren De La Rue, a British chemist and astronomer who invented the light bulb around 40 years before Edison. And now, George Washington's whiskey distillery. There seems to be some sort of link between presidents and alcohol. As the first president of the United States went on to open a whiskey distillery after his presidency, and a highly successful one at that, his distillery ended up becoming the largest in the country by the year 1799, producing around 11,000 gallons of unaged whiskey. After the president's death, though, the business saw a relatively quick end. Next, the deaths of John Adams and Thomas Jefferson. On July 4th, 1826, both U.S. presidents, John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, passed on the same day, within five hours of each other. A pretty crazy coincidence. They used to be fellow patriots who later become adversaries, and they were also the last surviving members of the Founding Fathers. Now, the misconception about the Salem witch trials. Most of us know, or have at least vaguely heard about, the infamous witch trials in Salem, Massachusetts, which began in February 1692 and lasted until May 1693. Almost 200 people were accused of practicing witchcraft, including the elderly, the homeless, as well as a four-year-old girl. The majority of these people were put in jail and some of them were hanged, but none of them were actually burned at the stake. Lastly, the U.S. president who overdosed on cherries. After serving as president for only 16 months, the 12th president of the United States, Zachary Taylor, passed away after eating far too many cherries. The president went overboard on the 4th of July party in 1850, where he mixed an unhealthy amount of cherries with milk. He died on July 9th from gastrointestrius, also known as the stomach flu. The acid of the cherries mixed with the milk is believed to be the cause of the problem. That's a wrap for this video. What are your thoughts on Lincoln's past in wrestling and Zachary Taylor's bizarre death? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.